Hey guys, welcome back to another week of art um, and e-learning. I wanted to go through a couple of things that you will need to know for the next uh, couple of weeks, this week and the next. This is regarding your upcoming major project, your personal logo project on Gravit. So I just wanted to help some of you out understand how it is that you're going to get started on your Gravit logo. So the first thing I am going to do in case you have forgotten how to access this is I am going to go to Gravit Designer and it is going to open up my window where I can log in and start a new file. Now I want to interrupt this to make you guys aware of a couple of things. Number one, there are some of you who decided to go with the word mark for your logo and that is great. However, um, there's a couple of tools in Gravit Designer that you might feel tempted to use. And if that's the case, you will not receive a good grade for it because there are things that are already made for you. Whatever you do decide to make, it has to be done by you from scratch. You should not make use of the tools that I'm going to talk about up next. So the first thing I am going to do is um, I actually want to work in inches for this one. And I'm going to work in an area of 10 by 10 inches. And I'm going to create. Now, my Gravit Designer is already set up to be on the dark theme. In case you have forgotten how to do that, you can go to Edit, Settings. And then over here, you will have the light theme default. Just change it to the dark theme and save your changes. Now the next thing I am going to do is I am going to get started with what is going to be the basic shape of my logo so I can save it. I need to have something so I can save it. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go with the logo option that has the little knitted sweater and then my name shows up um, as cursive at the bottom. So I have the top, what would be the top of my sweater, and I want to make sure that it is centered in this area. Um, and I am going to save with Control S to save so that I can um, have something that I can constantly save to instead of waiting for disaster to ensue, like when your computer just freezes or your tab uh, randomly closes and then you've lost everything that you work for. My best advice for you is continue to click control as every other move. Whenever you're doing something important, continue to click control S. All right. Now the next part of this comes um, from the library and this text tool. Now some of you might have a word mark that's just your name so you might feel tempted to do this i could write here miss press and i could go ahead and um, change highlight that by clicking Control a and then change the font now i am not going to do that actually and i hope none of you will because that will count as cheating. A font is, somebody, so, is something somebody else has already worked on. So you want to make sure that is that you're not taking credit for something that has already been created by, the, by another individual. You want to make sure that whatever you do make is completely yours from scratch. Now, that does not mean it has to look incredibly professional, but I just want you to try. These are different circumstances from what we would usually do. And um, this is a time when we are working remotely. So I know you might not always have the answers you are looking for, and that is okay. I just want you to make sure that you are trying your best um, and that you are giving me 100% effort. That doesn't mean you have to go out of your way to find ways to make things look like what you want it to. Now, the other thing I need to warn you about is the library. Every time I do this unit, 
I have a student or two or a handful of students who want to use something that is already there, especially when it comes to the illustration. So they'll say, well, I want mine to have a camera there. So they'll just come up with that. Now, while somebody created this and it was all created from scratch, I can tell it was not you. Uh, it'll even be grouped and have all your paths. I know it is not you. So please, please, please do not use anything from the library. Doing that counts as a type of plagiarism. You're taking credit for something you did not make. So you will receive a zero if you turn something in that includes an item from the library or um, text as a, that has already been created for you. Now there's an exception. If your um, item, if your logo that you're creating is not just text, there is something else combined with it, it could be a combination mark, then I will allow you to use the text tool. If you use a just a word mark where it's just your name spelled out, you may not use the text tool. Um, I just want to make things a little bit easier to handle for those people who are choosing to do something more complex like a combination mark. Um, because doing that plus creating the text from scratch would be very time consuming. So I want to make sure you guys understand um, that you will not either use the library or use the text tool if you're doing a word mark because that will uh, give, get you a zero for the assignment. All right, next thing I am going to do is I am going to create, actually I'm gonna take these ellipse um, and I am going to click Control D to duplicate it, hold Shift key bring it down and I'm going to make this slightly longer not necessarily larger now I have one selected I hold shift I select the next and then I'm going to do this where both of them can be selected at the same time all right and now the next thing I am going to do is hmm, this one is kind of difficult the next thing I am going to do is I'm going to change this color to maybe this just so I can tell it apart. I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to select the color that I use here, but I'm going to change it to like a lighter version. And then what I probably want to do is click on the letter P for my path tool. I'm going to want to create. something like that so I can join it like the top of a sweater. Now I did not do a good job with the points in here but that's okay because I can grab my point and just move it to where I need it to go. similarly to this side. So now I'm going to take these two, I'm going to take the bottom ellipse, and I am going to convert it into a path. And I'm going to take these two guys, and I am going to create a compound shape. Woo um, so it is now one and the same. And the next thing I want to do is click on my compound shape again, and convert it into a path. So it is one shape instead of two. And right here, what I'm gonna do is I am going to press on my um, pen and I am going to, nope. You can click on it, click on the minus sign and then get rid of that. That way I don't have that little annoying bump there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is bring this down a little bit. Oh. Hmm. Let's see, what do I want to do? Hmm. 
Now, while you are working on this, let me tell you, a lot of this is going to be trial and error, and that is okay. Now, I decided, well, maybe the best thing for me is to... Um, whoop, I'm going to, let's see, I have two ellipses right now. I am going to make this slightly smaller. Select both of them, center that, and center in the middle, and this is going to be the darker color. Um, All right, for my sweater. Next, I need to create a body for it. So I am gonna go with my rectangle tool, click R. You see my guide there where it has, um, it automatically turns into that color. And I can have that done. And one of the things I'm gonna do here is I am going to try to smooth my corners. Well, that works a little bit better than I thought. And then I am going to click on both of these shapes. Oh, no, click on the rectangle, hold control key and click on my path. And then I am going to make another compound shape that's gonna go down here. So I am just trying to put all the pieces of what's gonna be the sweater together. So now with my compound shape, I'm gonna go to modify, path, convert to path, sweater, body. Now my sweater body still needs for me to, um, it still needs some arms. I have a decent sweater body. I still need some arms. I would certainly like the bottom of my sweater to be, um, to be a little bit curvier. And there are two ways you could have done that. You could have either done what I just did, or you could have curved those beforehand, um, before you turn it into a clipping mask. Before I turn it into a clipping mask, I could have already uh, done that. And maybe I'll go back and do that because it seems to be simpler than what I just did. So I'm gonna click Control Z to undo all that. There we go. Now that I have that, I am going to click on my letter O. Still no, still a compound shape. Let's go back. All right, now that I have this, hmm, maybe I need to turn this into a path first. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to click on one corner, hold shift, click on the other corner, and then I'm going to change those two corners. Oh, one is too much, so maybe 0.35, because remember, this time some of you are like, one doesn't seem like a lot, but we are working on inches this time, not pixels, or at least I'm working on inches. You can work on whatever unit you want, whatever works for you, but I usually prefer working on something that will be useful when I think of how it's going to look on print. Now that I have the bottom of my sweater rounded, I am going to click on that top path, hold my control key, click on the bottom path, and then I'm going to convert it, oh, create compound shape, and then I'm going to convert it into a path. And now that it's obscuring that, I'm going to bring it down in there. All right. Now, next thing I need to do is add some arms. So I am going to click on my rectangle tool, make some longer rectangles, longish rectangles. And then I want to try to maybe angle it here. just a little bit, and I mean, you have the chance to kind of do what you want with that, and I think I want to give my sweater some arms, actually, so I'm duplicating that rectangle. No, let me do the one arm first, like I taught you guys you should do. 
I'm going to bring this down. One thing I probably want to do is round my corners. Like so. Maybe I need to angle that a bit more. Now I feel like the body of my uh, sweater is kind of big. That's okay though because I can always change that. And then I'm going to grab these two, turn them into a compound shape, convert into a path, duplicate it, move it over and attach it to the other side. Now, oh, this one doesn't fit so great on here. Hmm. All right, that's okay. So now I have my two parts of the sweater. I know it doesn't look perfect, but um, that will do for now and I'll continue working on it. But just for the sake of brevity, one of the things I would like you to do is label your layers. So I'm gonna go here, sweater, body. This path is going to be my left arm. And this one is going to be my right arm. And then um, I'm going to lock these layers for now and and you can do that by clicking on this little lock that's on here this will just allow you to keep working on top of what you've created without having to move anything around so right now i know these things are there but i can move them all right next thing i am going to do is use my path tool oh this one is going to be tough now my sweater has um, this little pattern that's like a looping E. So I want to make sure I want to try to do the best that I can with that. And some people think that maybe the best thing to do is to um, Let's see, you know what, maybe I don't need that one. Maybe I just need the one little one. If you have anything that requires curves, I would suggest um, just making sure that you are making use of those curve controls that are here, the jo the different joints. Um, and this is, I guess, what I would do. Um, for my little curvatures. All right, I am going to finish off right now because I don't want you to have to watch a whole however many hours of me trying to make these little loops. However, I will host a Q&A session that's for questions and answers. It will be on Thursday, and I will post a link on your Unified Classroom um, for the time and the web address for where it will be held. So I'll be there um, online in case you guys have any questions about your work in progress. Um, Again, you will have this week and the next to work on your personal logo. 
you guys can go all out if you want to. The only thing is you cannot use the text if you're using a word mark or the libraries for any kind of icon because those are things that have already been used by somebody else. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me and I'll try to answer those as best as I can. I know Gravit is hard for some of you, but I just want you to give it a try and just do your best. Thank you for watching.